recording is going to so please start okay thank you very good afternoon to all of the participants here as the panel has already conveyed you that my topic is agroforestry as regenerative agriculture system a holistic approach to sustainable agriculture so actually why there has been felt a need for this regenerative agriculture so many problems either that means problem is some of the main challenges which are posed by intensive agriculture for example 40 to 55 percent of india's soils are severely deficient in nitrogen phosphorus potassium and organic carbon why such scenario has just happened because since the inception or since the start of the green we have been getting the fertilizer management or the nutrient management that hasn't been balanced that means there has been a wide gap between the nutrient uptake or the nutrient loss from the soil and that of the replenishment as a result of which 40 to 55 percent of india soil is are severely deficient in nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and organic carbon. In addition to this, a great percentage of uh, the soil is, are showing the deficiencies of micronutrients as well, especially the deficiency of zinc and paddy soil is, sulfur in oil seeds, and so on. Synthetic fertilizers are used inefficiently. When I say inefficiently, I mean either they are not being used on the or they are being used on 29 is to 1.7 is the current proportion in which the NPK fertilizers are being used. It should have been four is to two is to one. So the addition of fertilizers are not serving the intention for which we are actually using them. Rice production is associated with intensive water consumption, especially in Punjab. You can see there is great depletion of the groundwater. And for one kg of the rice, we need around about 2,500 liters of the water. So it's a monocrop. It is wreaking havoc with our environment. That means our groundwater resources. Rice is currently cultivated in semi-arid regions, such as parts of Punjab. As I have told you that unsustainable rates of groundwater extraction is caused by the rice cultivation so somewhere we have to sort out the solutions for this also. In India, each year between 92 and 90, uh, 122 million tons of residue from rice, wheat, and sugarcane are burned in the fields. And unfortunately, 1.3 tons per hectare carbon dioxide is being emitted from our fields annually. So. As per the projection is, as per the down scaled projection is of the climate change, under, under the current scenario, if this emission scenario continues unabated, average temperature or average temperature is expected, rather it is not expected, it is feared to rise by about 4.86 degrees by 2080. And under such scenario of temperature increase, you can see, what will be the fate of our about 567.5 million tons of carbon dioxide per year? 
As of 2023, roughly 30% of India's total geographic area is degraded land that is unfit for growing quality crops. And you can see the scenario of desertification, which has been reported by different uh, sources. So there are uh, these problems which I have highlighted in addition to them, there are so many other problems and all those problems, there are the solution, there is the solution in the form of regenerative agriculture. It's a need of our, and it has been defined differently by different schools of thought, by different scientists. Few of them I'm elaborating here. Farming and grazing practices that, among other benefits, reverse climate change by rebuilding soil organic matter. That means those farming and grazing practices which enhance the soil carbon sequestration. That how is this possible? This is possible through the agroforestry because in agroforestry it is there are different. This this is the combination. It's the intentional combined cultivation of different uh, crops which are having different root systems, different root depths, different root behavior. So they build the soil organic carbon and they restore the degraded soil biodiversity. How they restore the degraded soil biodiversity? Because every plant, every crop, every tree is having a different set of biomolecular footprints or biomolecular properties. As far as their roots are concerned, so are the associated, bio, so is the associated biota as a result of which when we go for plantation of diverse crops in a particular field, we are ensuring a diverse habitat, a diverse food sources for myriad of microorganisms and other organisms as such, which as a result improve and restore the uh, biological diversity in the soil. And there is resulting in carbon drawdown, as I have already told you, that this is the basic principle under the current scenario of changing climate that we're aiming there should be much more of the carbon sequestration and there should be an improved water cycle. Improved water cycle, that means the infiltration of the soil, uh, infiltration of water into the soil is improved it is first it is retention on the surface of the soil is improved then it is infiltration in the soil is uh, improved then it is percolation is uh, that is uh, percolation losses and other uh, evapotranspiration losses they are curtailed by this agroforestry system so this is one definition i was just discussing with you then another school of thought that is in wood, he is saying that regenerative agriculture actively builds the system or resource base it utilizes. Whatsoever resource we use for our crop production, so regenerative agriculture that safeguards it, it uses it in a sustainable manner. That means we, it fulfills the needs of the present generation, and at the same time, it safeguards the interests of the future generations, and it saves. If goddess to uh, services, a system of farming principles and practices that increases biodiversity and enriches soil, improves watersheds, and enhances ecosystem services. It is just like the same which I have already discussed with you. Any system of agriculture that continuously improves the cycles on which it relies, including the human, the biological, and the economic community. Regenerative agriculture is a system of principles and practices that generates agricultural products, sequesters carbon, and enhances biodiversity at the farm level. 
So regenerative agriculture is marked by tendencies towards closed nutrient loops, greater diversity in the biological community, fewer animals and more perennials, and greater reliance on internal rather than external sources. So here, one more point, it is he has this particular definition, is quoting that there are closed nutrient loops. That means closed nutrient loops is the nutrient cycling within the system, within the crop production system, within the field, that is really very efficient. The losses are minimized. And when losses are, are mining is minim minimized, losses are minimized, that means the nutrient use efficiency is enhanced and it is increased. There are some core practices of the regenerative agriculture, that is, it build this, it contributes to generate our building soils and soil fertility and health. It increases water percolation, water retention, and clean and safe water runoff. It increases the biodiversity and ecosystem health and resiliency. It inverts the carbon emissions of our current agriculture to one of remarkably significant carbon sequestration, thereby cleansing the atmosphere of legacy levels of carbon dioxide. Let us elaborate them. Let us elaborate them. Let us elaborate them. Contribute to generating building soils and soil fertility and health. Okay. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Am I audible? Am I audible? Hello? Yes, yes, sir. Sir. yes sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Actually, one of my kids has entered. So I was warding her off. Sorry. So, regenerative agriculture relies on practices that contribute to generating, building soil, soil fertility, and health. Actually, when we say building of the soil fertility core to the soil health is soil organic carbon. Because soil organic carbon, when we are just uh, diversing, diversifying the crops in our field, we're ensuring there is build up of soil organic carbon at multiple depths of the soil or to the greater depths of soil, which, for example, with respect to the physical condition, this organic carbon building, it will increase, it will improve the soil structure. When the soil structure is improved, the water infiltrate rate of water infiltration will increase, the water retention will increase, and when the organic carbon content will increase, the CEC, that means cation exchange capacity of the soil, that will increase. And when the cation exchange capacity of the soil will increase, the nutrient holding capacity of the soil will increase. And when the nutrient holding capacity of the soil will increase, the nutrient supplying power of the soil will also increase. Not only this, the main source, nutrient source of the life of soil, that means the microorganisms, that's the soil organic carbon. So any combination of crops and trees that enhances the soil organic carbon, that also enhances the soil microbial diversity, and as a result, soil health and soil fertility. Increased water percolation, I've already discussed it, increased biodiversity, ecosystem health, ecosystem health, that means 
all its ecosystem functions, they will be improved. And resiliency, resiliency, very important point it is. That means it is the capacity of soil to bounce back after any untoward happening, for example, by chance, if there is any acid rain on a particular field, if it is resilient, so it will bounce back, it will correct any aberration in the pH on its own. So these systems, this agroforest system, it adds the organic matter to the soil and it makes it more resilient. It inverts the carbon emissions of our current agriculture to one of the remarkably significant carbon sequestration, thereby cleansing the atmosphere. Main reason for inverting, because the current uh, system of agriculture that relies on extreme disturbance of the soil, that means very heavy machinery, very heavy tillage is used to disturb the soil. And when we disturb the soil, we actually expose the soil organic carbon to escape. We just ensure through the soil disturbance that much more more carbon dioxide carbon dioxide escapes from the soil so core principle of the regenerative agriculture either it is no tillage or it is least soil disturbance and when we revert to this definitely there will be the build of organic carbon in the soil and emissions will be decreased so next are uh, unifying principles consistent across regenerative farming systems in include throughout the world uh, in different countries people are uh, using or they are adopting the regenerative farming systems under different names but consistent are the uniform principles uniform practices they are abandoning of tillage i have already discussed it with you that this tillage this Tillage is the main cause of concern as far as the emissions are concerned. So abandoning tillage is one of the consistent principles across all the regenerative farming systems across the world. Then eliminating special temporal events of bare soil. That means bare soil. So when the soil will be bare, definitely evapotranspirator losses of the water will be more, the emissions will be more and uh, it will be subjected to more uh, this wind erosion and water erosion. And so these will be eliminated. Why we want to foster the plant diversity on the farm? Why it is the basic principle? Because it serves multiple purposes one purpose i have already discussed it with you when the plant diversity is increasing on the form the root diversity is increased and when the root diversity is increased the microbial diversity also gets increased and second is farm income that also uh, increases and the risk mitigation automatically it mitigates them when we diverse the uh, crops on our farm any risk that is posed by the changing climate or any other adverse condition that is mitigated. Integrating livestock and cropping operations on the land. So these are the basic principles which are common throughout. Then agroforestry as a solution. Um, now I'm going to discuss agroforestry as a regenerative agricultural system. So prior to moving to my next slide, is, it is imperative to just give a definition or define it for uh, some time. Agroforestry, the U USDA definition is like this, the international, in, sorry, the intentional integration of trees and shrubs into crop and animal farming systems to create environmental, economic, and social benefits. So there are threefold. When we are intending the integration of trees and shrubs and animals, intentional integration to serve the three purposes, that means environmental purposes, or economic purposes, and our social purposes. Agroforestry is a holistic food production system. Holistic, that means 
it is it, it is not a single component system it's a multi component system it's a holistic food production system which addresses social ecological and economic goals while agroforestry is a relatively new term its principles and methods have been applied for time immemorial throughout the world through careful observation of natural forests so where from this agroforestry actually agroforestry has been there in the nature but what motivated us to adopt it as a food production system because it was it was the the inspiration man got the inspiration from the regeneration potential of the forests because forests they on their own they regenerate even even after extreme adversities for example forest fires they do regenerate so this regeneration potential of the forests that was mimicked that was adopted in the form of agroforestry a testament to, to agroforestry's ability to sustain themselves over generations is the indigenous cultivation of breadfruit which has taken place over millennia and up to present day in highly biodiverse multi-story perennial agroforests in the Pacific Islands. Climatic, physiographic, and socio-economic variations influence the types of agroforestry practices used and systems yielded across the world. Agroforestry is prevalent, for example, throughout India, we can see agroforestry is prevalent in traditional land use systems. Agroforestry systems of Erythrina indica trees shading coffee and acting as a support tree for black pepper. Wines are common in western Ghats of Kerala. In the northeastern Himalayan region of India, another common system is highly productive and widely practiced intercropping of pineapple and black pepper beneath the Ereka nut palm. So, this was a little bit about the agroforestry. So why should we adopt this agroforestry as a regenerative system? What are its such properties? What does it hold that prompts us to adopt agroforestry as a regenerative agricultural production system? A recent USDA Forest Service study with over 50 contributors from around the USA documents the ability of agroforestry systems to enhance agricultural production, protect the soil, air, water quality, provide wildlife habitat, and allow for diversified income. So this finding, this finding that means they have found that agroforestry does enhance the agriculture production. It does protect the soil, air, and water quality. It does provide wildlife habitat, and it does allow the diversified income. It means that it is doing all the services. It has proven that agroforestry is capable of doing the environmental services. It is capable of improving the soil health. It is capable of giving the enhanced agriculture yields. At the same time, it is also capable of serving us socially. So benefit is in alignment with regenerative agriculture goals, that is soil enrichment, water quality enhancement, biodiversity enhancement, and conservation, ecosystem services, and carbon sequestration have been extensively reported by researchers under agroforestry system. That means, what is a regenerative system? We see, you see, a regenerative system is any system which makes our soil health soil resilient, which improves the soil quality, which enhances the biodiversity, which conserves and safeguards our ecosystem. And it has been reported that agroforestry does hold promise to safeguard all these benefits. So agroforestry practices have the potential to repair degraded and deforested lands and restore or enhance the multifunctionality of landscapes. It has a potential to significantly improve ecosystem services and enhance biodiversity conservation, 
undegraded agricultural land and deforested areas. It has the potential to offer other significant benefits, including cultural and social. A regeneration of degraded land through agroforestry offers the added benefit of producing food within communities and supporting rural economies and subsistence livelihoods. So there are basic practices that can be basic agroforestry practices that can be efficiently integrated into the existing agricultural systems. And what are those practices? They are LA cropping, contour hedge grow, forest farming, living fairness, multi-story cropping, repair and forest buffer, silvo arable systems, silvo posture, and wind prey. The five most common agroforestry practices implemented globally are LA cropping, forest farming, repair and buffers, silvo posture, and wind breaks. And you see, uh, just uh, for the purpose of illustration, this is the LA cropping, this is the contour hedge grow, so forest forming, this is the live fence, this is the repair and forest buffer, silver arable system, silver pasture, and windbreak. So these all, let me repeat it once again, these are indispensable because earlier I was talking that it is a holistic production system. So for example, if I am adopting the LA cropping and I'm not adopting the wind breaks, that means all the components of the agroforest, efficient agroforestry system I haven't adopted. So these are the very important uh, throughout the world. Uh, it has been accepted that these are core to any agroforestry system that is LA cropping, contour, hedgerow, forest farming, living fairness, repair and forest buffer, silver arable system, silver posture, and wind breaks. So let us discuss now in detail one by one all the components of agroforestry systems. LA cropping, it's also known as intercropping, closely related to silo, silo arable agroforestry, and it is the practice of planting single or multiple rows of trees with cultivated crops in the alleys between the tree rows. That means between the two tree, tree rows, for, we are going for the cultivation of crops. What are the advantages? Cropping systems can reduce runoff and soil erosion by water. How can they um, uh, reduce the soil runoff and soil erosion by water? Because especially where there is more gradient, the slope is higher. So when we go for the adoption of LA cropping, the tree rows, they act as barriers to the free flow of water as a result of which the speed with which the water moves down the slope, that gets decreased. And when the speed of the water gets decreased, it is carrying capacity, it is cutting capacity, that gets decreased. And when it's cutting capacity or carrying capacity gets decreased, definitely it's potential to cause the soil erosion, sheet erosion, especially in first place, that gets decreased. It improves nutrient use efficiency. How it improves, how LA cropping improves, improves the nutrient use efficiency. Because earlier I have also discussed it, when we go for the cultivation of crops and trees side by side, we just uh, ensure that more organic carbon, more organic carbon is added to the soil and there is reduction of the very rich surface layer of the soil that means there is twofold advantage with respect to the soil or carbon in first place soil organic carbon is safeguarded against the erosion and in second phase it is also there is continuous addition of the soil organic carbon 
So both of these, in, under both of these two scenarios, the uh, cation exchange capacity due to the addition of organic matter and the resultant organic acid is the cation exchange capacity of soil that increases. The nutrient reserves in the form of organic matter that increases as a result of which nutrient efficiency also increases. Sequesters carbon, it increases biodiversity. Planting tree rows along the contour of the land can reduce soil erosion. I've already discussed it. It also diversifies revenue streams over time, providing short-term and long-term income gener generation. Beneficial interactions occur between complementary plant species and plant types when grown together. These interactions can result in yields exceeding those in monoculture or plantation standards stands. For example, this is uh, the uh, this is the slide I'm trying to show you the effect of LA cropping on soil physical property. One of the very important soil physical property that is soil structure, and as you can see that this is the pruning intensity. This is the pruning when hedgerow. That means when the tree component to pruning was decreased, the effect on the soil aggregates was also improved. That means the LA cropping component, that means the tree component, its foliage does have a very positive impact on the soil structure. Soil chemical properties change in LA cropping systems as influenced by three different woody species. But you can see uh, under uh, the Subabu, Lucina, Leucospela, pH, organic carbon, total nitrogen, it was best. CEC, very important with respect to soil's capacity to hold the nutrients. So it was also improved as compared to initial conditions and as compared to the control. Very important uh, with respect to the current scenario of climate change, you can see the carbon sequestration potential of the LA cropping systems. This is, it ranges from one to 4.6, one other, uh, these three species, E, P, O, P, G, N, A, and 4.6 under G, C, P, M. So it has a great potential to sequester or improve the carbon sequestration in the soil. Another component is forest farming. This first is LA cropping and another is forest farming. Forest farming is the practice of cultivating high value shade tolerant Crops, for example, mushrooms under the protection of forest manager to provide a favorable microclimate for understory crops, for example, mushrooms, medicinal herbs. That means there is scope of going for the cultivation of some selected crops under the tree canopy of the forests, and they include different categories. That means they are known as non-timber forest products and they include food, botanicals, decoratives, handicrafts. Forest farming has become popular for landowners to diversify income opportunities, improve management of forest resources and increase biological diversity. Forest farming can help protect, so it also safeguards the foresters from clearing or other uses because definitely when the benefit is, when the advantages of the forest is, they are multiplied through the adoption of forest farming. So forest farming in a sense protects the forests as well from getting cleared. These are the suggested herbs depending on, depending on site conditions for and this forest farmers. For example, these are some photographs 
wild rabbits and may apple in a forest pot. This is ginseng seedling in a forest. This is plot prepared for golden seal. This is golden seal leaf uh, uh, on forest floor. So now very important component of the agroforestry system that is riparian buffer. Riparian buffers are the lands and assemblages of plants bordering rivers, streams, bays, and other waterways. They directly affect and are directly impacted by the aquatic environment. Buffers have high levels of soil moisture, experience frequent flooding, and are populated by plant and animal communities that are adapted to life along the water. The boundary between the buffer and adjoining uplands is gradually and may not be is gradual and may not be well defined. Benefits. What are I going to discuss these benefits in detail? They protect the quality of water we drink. These repairing buffers because up to 60 from 60 to 70 percent of the suspended matter that means the dirt, the runoff water, for example, when there is a torrential uh, rainfall, so a lot of suspended material is in the water, and these uh, repairing buffers they trap from 60 to 70 percent of that suspended material and as a result they purify the water not only this they also it has been reported that widely used herbicides widely used pesticides for example atrazine bitter chlor and other other pesticides there are reports that repairing buffers they do trap them to a very significant level. As a result, they protect the quality of water that we drink. They intercept non-point source pollutants carried by surface water runoff and remove the excess nitrogen, phosphorus, and other substances that can pollute water bodies. Because they act a natural barrier to the uh, uh, runoff, they just haul it for time being and any excess nitrogen, phosphorus, and other substances, which are potential pollutants, they just arrest them. They uptake the nutrients, and uh, as a result, they preserve or they safeguard our water bodies. They stabilize stream banks and minimize erosion. Now, there are two ways, for example, repair and buffers. There are Grass repairing buffers and they reported that tree solid and a combination can be even better because they are very solid. Uh, they have very robust root systems. They percolate deep down the soil. They hold the soil together. Their cohesiveness, that means the cohesiveness of those roots is great. And as a result, the, the tensile strength of the soil is increased and the soil is protected the banks are protected from runoff from erosion by the stream so they de uh, decrease the frequency and intensity of flooding and low stream flows prevent the sedimentation of waterways as i already told because suspended matter up to 70 percent of the suspended matter is trapped by these repairing buffers as a result sedimentation of waterways is prevented through shading reduce the, these repairing buffers reduce swings in stream temperatures and prevent elevated temperatures harmful to aquatic life it's very important this shading is very important because it has a moderating effect on the stream temperature with other it, it can decrease the stream temperature from 1.5 degree up to 2.7 degree average temperature and it has when the temperature otherwise when the temperature of the stream increases by this much for example two degrees the metabolic activities of the aquatic animals they increase and then when the metabolic activity of the aquatic animals increase there is much more demand of the 
of oxygen and when there is more demand of the oxygen so so much oxygen is not present in the water definitely as a result the aquatic life can suffer shocks and that these conditions can be fatal to them as well so when we go for the riparian buffers it provides the shading and it protects the aquatic life uh, in this way uh, another very important uh, uh, effect of this uh, uh, and the very important uh, effect uh, of these riparian buffers is on the ammonia volatilization because oh, when the temperature of stream increases there is the formation of ammonia also so in this way which is very toxic so it can also protect uh, uh, this it provides food and habitat for wildlife of the land water and air and allow for wildlife movement within the natural corridors it replenishes groundwater and protects associated wetlands so another important component is silvo posture that is silvo posture is an agroforestry practice that combines trees with forage and livestock production. Two approaches to the establishment of silver pasture are the planting of tree species on pasture land or the thinning and management of existing forest land to establish forage crops and accommodate grazing of livestock, sometimes referred to as forest grazing. Through either approach, trees and postures are managed as a single integrated system that is actively used to graze livestock. Converting posture to silver posture diversifies adventure sources of revenue and can provide the security of mid to long term revenue from tree crops such as fruit, nuts, and timber. The trees in silver posture systems can also shade livestock from direct sunlight as well as abatements to provide livestock with limited production from cold weather. Of the five categories of agroforestry practices, silver posture has the largest potential available area for expansion. For example, there are other benefits, other advantages of silvopastoral, especially, for example, when napier grass and mulberry, that is a silvopastoral system. Napier grass, it is having very, there is good, this uh, forage production, but the crude protein content of this particular uh, uh, crop, that means nephir, crude, crude protein content is low. As compared to it, uh, when we take the case of mulberry, production of the forage is in the form of leaves, that is low, but the content, crude protein content is very high. So when we combine these two in the form of silver parcel, there is production is also increased and the crude protein content is also increased. So what are the advantages? Advantages, it has been reported that it increases the phosphorus, soil phosphorus availability. It modulates diversity and structure of uh, bacterial community. It recovers the soil health. It impacts um, positively, multiple soil functions related to nutrient dynamics, water retention and supply, and biological activity. As you can see, that soil health index under uh, native vegetation, pasture, and silvopastoral systems in two sites in Colombia and Amazon region, you can see that all the index actually, this soil health index, these were 30 values. 30 values, for example, they consist of uh, soil bulk density, they consist of you know, soil aggregation, soil erodibility, almost 30 soil health indices, they were evaluated for the soil is under different land uses. And it was found that the soil under silver postural system has the best secure for almost all the soil health indices. The annual forage yields have been reported higher under moderate shade for all uh, scientists have studied all about 43 species in one of the study and they report 43 species of forage crops and they have reported 
that foliage yields were higher under the moderate shade and even higher under dense shade for 31 of them. Most grass and legume forages could perform equally well in agroforestry compared to open process systems as long as the root competition with other species remain minimum. Forages have equivalent growth protein content when grown under moderate shade than in the full sun. Better livestock performance as live silver pasture offers alternative animal feed sources such as tree leaves or pods. This is um, I have highlighted it because uh, what happened is in uh, this. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Uh, better livestock performance. What happens, for example, when we go for the cultivation of a forage as a sole crop, the nutrient content that is very dynamic. Nutrient content in the forage is that is very dynamic. That means it changes. And it is in vegetative stage, the nutrient content will be, for example, A, then when it comes to flowering, it will be B. Post flowering, it will be C. But in case of the trees, which are um, a uh, vital component of silvopostal system, the tree leaves, the nutrient content of the tree leaves, that remains constant. That means why better livestock performance have been reported on the silvopostal system is because steady supply of the nutrients is well ensured through the silvopostal system. Uh, as the leaf, as the nutrient content of the leaves doesn't change drastically like that of the forage crops. Leaves of uh, different uh, is, species, they can be used as alternative protein sources for supplementing low quality tropical forages. Leaves of assessment and uh, leucus pillar would be used as alternative calcium and magnesium sources for those of Moringa species and Moringa heterogena as sources of phosphorus. Leaves of Nilotica and P. Gilifera and C. Kajan, as well as borders of M. Heterogia, were identified as potential candidates for mitigating methane production. That means when leaves of these particular crops are fed to the livestock, Sir, what happened? Slides are not visible, sir. So, help, sir. Hello? Hamida, madam. Are you there? Hamida?
हेलो एनी क्वेश्चन हेलो वाट्स में इफ यू हैव एनी क्वेश्चन प्लीज आ सक सर I think there are no questions.